Welcome back to Hawkeye Skunk Works. Uh, today we are going to recap the Tacoma, the second gen Tacoma TRD off-road package Bilstein suspension that is on my 05 fourth gen 4Runner, well, plus the one inch spacers and old man emu springs in the back. But uh, ATR was the first chance we had to really take this out and off-road it with that suspension. Uh, so there's definitely some things that I want to change. Um, but I wanted to tell you guys all about it because it seems to be really popular uh, option as far as suspension goes for these fourth gens. Let's dig right into it. We are going to do something that has never been done before. The cheapest third gen Toyota 4Runner in the entire country. Welcome back to Hawkeye Skunk Works where I have bought another 4Runner. Seriously. It just got deep. Row, row. Dad, uh. everything is blowing! So, it's a little after 8 o'clock, and uh, it's dark and we're in bed. Well, we finally got I'm stuck. That was a little ridiculous. Okay, so up front, I'm going to be talking a lot. and But it's a lot of good information. I promise if you're interested in this suspension setup, it'll be well worth watching the video. So, to recap, um, it has a second gen. Um, you know what? Maybe it's a third gen. It's a 2015, so whatever year that is. 2015 model year uh, TRD Tacoma off-road suspension. So Bilstein strut assemblies in the front, Bilstein shocks in the back, the yellow and blue ones. Uh, they had 25,000 miles on them uh, when I put it in. And uh, the back have the Old Man Emu springs, the two and a half inch, inch springs, not the HD ones. I'll put the part number somewhere. And then on the front, I also have one inch coil spacers that I got off of eBay for 25 bucks. They're just, they're not even like stacked. It's just like a chunk of aluminum. So, um, got me at least two and a half inches in the back, maybe more. I don't know how much in the front because it was so saggy with 175,000 miles or 170,000 miles on the truck. Factory struts as far as I could tell. Um, sits pretty level. If you measure from the the rocker panels, the, the straight rocker panel, there's about a half an inch of difference between the front and the back. Obviously it looks like there's more rake because the fenders are cut higher in the back and the hoods on these are really slanted forward. On road, fantastic. It is superb. It's a great suspension setup. Um, on gravel roads, fantastic. Great suspension. Towing my camper, which is about a 4,000 pound camper. Obviously the tongue weight is not that much. Um, it's been great. I don't think I've had any noticeable sag on the springs in the back and I've towed my camper, I don't know, a dozen times at least. Um, the It sits level-ish. These have the issue with the fuel tank on the driver's side. They tend to, to slope uh, to that side, but the newer Tacoma suspension, the, the front strut coil has one more coil in it. So it's supposed to help level it out. It does a little bit, but if you measure, even with a relatively empty fuel tank, uh, it's still, it, it does lean a little bit, so, but not much. So, off-road at ATR. Uh, first impressions, for the money, I don't think you could beat it. I spent, I think, $150 uh, for the entire suspension, the, the TRD suspension shipped to my house, which that's kind of like, I'd say that's pretty average for what I've seen. Uh, 150 bucks for the rear springs, $25 for the front spacers, plus an alignment. You do the math. So uh, compared to like $800 for a kind of Bilstein 5100 Old Man Emu suspension setup straight from the internet, it's hard to beat. One thing I noticed at ATR was the rear end. Uh, when I was coming off of a rock or coming off a little ledge or whatever, it would almost like just like the truck would like feel like it dropped and it would just kunk, it would just hit 
So I don't really don't have a good answer for that. It wasn't like uh, the axle dropped really fast and then the body dropped onto the springs and then it all it was like it was like you went over and the suspension didn't expand at all and then the whole thing just dropped out. Um, now by the third day it occurred to me that last year when I rode with Joe in his uh, Tacoma that had the exact same suspension um, the rear end did the same thing. Now I realize the truck has less weight in the back and it's got leaf springs but it, it felt exactly the same so possibly that's the, that's the shock absorber. So I'll let you guys leave some comments down below. What do you think? Probably go to the 5100s, uh, just because that's the most economical option besides Dobinson's or Toy Tech or the Old Man Emu uh, shocks. Um, I'll probably put a set of those on. I have noticed, I think they're starting to get a little bit worn out. Um, maybe it was a little, maybe I overworked them a little bit on the trail because they had mileage on them. I don't know. I can tell a little bounciness um, on the road. And it's not bounciness because I don't have a rear sway bar bounciness. I know the difference. So talking about the fact that I don't have a rear sway bar, um, I, I think I touched on this in my ATR video briefly. The, the rear flex on this was amazing. Um, for everything that we did, I never lifted a tire. That was, and, well, I don't think I lifted a tire ever unless I was like going down something and then the terrain just dropped away and you know, there wasn't enough weight on the back to take up the slack, whatever. Um, but I did notice following both Joe's Tacoma and Tyler's uh, fifth gen, which are both very well built um, rigs, they did lift rear tires and I told them both, I was like, uh, I think you need to get rid of your rear sway bars because I know what your vehicles are capable of and I know that it should those shouldn't have been lifting tires. So um, again, if you do this, if you take your rear sway bar off, disclaimer, do it at your own risk, yada yada yada, drive carefully. Um, off-road abuse only, etc., etc. So that was my only complaint um, for the rear was that like that weird jarring dropout. Um, so I'll probably in the springtime I'll probably put 5100s on it. There's no sense in doing it right now. Front suspension was great, no problems with flex. Uh, I did a couple times feel like maybe those springs are a little bit bounce in again. I guess. I can't say for sure, just based on my research, I feel it's the spring, not the strut. Um, it's a little bit bouncier um, coming down off of stuff, even slowly and coming off small things. was well, a little bit bouncier than I would have liked. Um, so I'll probably keep my eyes out for sales or use struts, use springs, and go to 5100s like everyone else um, and um, a set of the, the medium duty fourth gen forerunner springs and again I'll put the old man emu ARB spring part number up on the screen there which says it should be two and a half inches of lift um, and unless you want to move up in a price point and change to a different brand that's probably all you can get and I will probably still run my one inch spacer and actually what I may end up doing because I, I put the jack underneath the front end and like jack the actual chassis up to take some measurements I may put a one and a half inch spacer on the passenger side, or a, scratch that, put a one inch spacer on the passenger side, a one and a half inch spacer on the driver's side to help correct for that lean because the aftermarket springs do not correct for that and those spacers are super cheap and I can probably sell the set on to someone else to do the same thing. Anyway, so um, that should still leave me with just a hint of rake. A little bit stiffer spring up in the front to support uh, any extra weight, like if I want to do a really low-key hidden winch mount, uh, I should be able to do that. That's kind of my initial uh, thoughts. You guys can leave comments down below. I think I've touched on this uh, before too. I need to get some adjustable upper control arms because my my lower control arm, the cam adjustment, they're not seized. I did double check with the alignment place they have just run out of adjustment so I'm still like half a degree out positive camber because it's not like a ricer where it's like this they're they're just barely out and so if I go up any higher um, it's gonna put them out even more which I don't have any adjustment for so probably some SPC 
yeah, SBC. Uh, adjustable upper control arms that have the ball joint that you can adjust, not the JBAs. Those, are, those have a three degree built in fix where you can adjust from the bottom, but I don't want to have to adjust the bottom any more than it's possible because I'm, it's probably close to being seized up or a bushing going bad, so we'll go with the adjustable uppers, um, which should fix all of that. So those are my uh, impressions. The type of wheeling that I do, again, the daily driving that we do, um, everything handled exactly how I expected. Did fantastic. Just, you know, there's a little bit of room for improvement for what I would like to see long run. So uh, those are my thoughts. Please, again, leave comments down below uh, on what you think that uh, might be better options or, you know, especially what you guys think about that rear end dropout. Um, kind of weird so other than that um, I will link the uh, the ATR video down below if you want to go check that out again and um, yeah head on over to Instagram head on over to Facebook follow me over there again post daily over there um, if you would please subscribe to the channel I'd really appreciate that and uh, give the video a thumbs up if you found it informative or helpful so turn the notifications on until next time take care thank you for watching Goodbye. See you on the trail. Cool.